a joy and a privilege that we get to worship together in this church online experience. And even today as you're seated in your homes or probably you're traveling or uh, you're probably seated somewhere where you've tuned into this church online experience, our prayer is that God will meet you right where you're at. And our prayer is that you'll be able to worship Jesus. You'll be able to call on his name. And more than anything, I strongly believe you would invite the Holy Spirit right where you're at. Because he wants to do something around you and he wants to do something in you. And even before we get into time of worship, I just want to encourage you by reading this verse, which in fact came uh, as you're recording this in the verse of the day today. And this is what it says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. It says, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen and establish you. You know, even as we are reading this, it says here, even after you've suffered a little while. In our Christian walk, everyone is suffering. Something big, something small, but we are all suffering in this season that we are at. In 2022, in the last week of Feb, probably you're going through some tough time. It says here, the God of all glory will himself restore, will himself confirm, will himself strengthen and establish us. And remember that the suffering that we have here on this earth is temporary. You know, a lot of us today uh, are within the comforts of our home and we sometimes are just wallowing in our own suffering and we forget to see what others around are going. But as you follow Jesus, he deposits in us what others are going. And I strongly believe that we as a church, we as Christ followers are called to stand in the gap so that we can intercede for others. And in turn, Christ will be able to establish us when time comes. So even as we get into time of worship, Whatever your heartache is, whatever probably your ailment is, could you just come to his throne room and say, Jesus, I'm going through something right now, but I can only lay everything right now and do one thing, and that is worship you. And so can I request you, can you worship him in spirit? Can you worship him in truth? The truth that you declare of who he is will come out so boldly that Satan will have to run away. And the third thing is, can you lift your hands and give him all the glory? So church, can we take some time and worship him now? Love for 
Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing, Lord Jesus. We thank you. You are God over everyone. We thank you. You're God over everything. We believe and we declare that you are God over every nation right now, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for coming into this world. We thank you that you died on the cross. And even right now as a church, we just lift our hands wherever we are seated, Lord. We lift our hands right now and we pray right now, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray even right now, Lord, for our brothers and sisters who are there in this country of Ukraine right now, Lord Jesus. We just pray and raise our hands towards them, Lord Jesus. We pray for peace. We pray for intervention to come, Lord Jesus. We pray that, Lord, there'll be peace across the borders, Lord Jesus. We pray that, Lord, you will do something. You will do something. Lord, if there's one thing we can see is that, Lord Jesus, each nation is holding back, but you, Lord, can come down. Lord, give peace, give grace, Lord Jesus, give strength. We pray for those who've lost loved ones, Lord Jesus. I pray that, Lord, your hand be upon them, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, for those who are in the midst of, Lord Jesus, turmoil, Lord Jesus, and difficulty. Your grace would be upon them. We pray even right now as a church, Lord Jesus, all we can do is cry out to you. All we can do, Lord Jesus, is lift our hands and say, Lord, you are God. They are your people. You've created them, Lord Jesus. Let, Lord, let hatred disappear, Lord Jesus. Let love come in that place, Lord Jesus. Let love abound, Lord Jesus, for their fellow brothers and sisters. We pray that, Lord, your hand be upon that nation, Lord Jesus. We pray that, Lord, even as they are being attacked, that, Lord, your sovereignty will be upon that nation. We pray that, Lord, there'll be stories that come out, Lord Jesus, where miracles are coming out of right now. And we pray that, Lord, you would come through, Lord Jesus. We would come through, Lord Jesus. We pray for each and every one, Lord. We pray for those who are displaced. We pray for those who've lost homes, who've lost so many things in the process, Lord Jesus. We cannot even mention it, Lord. We ask for your peace to come down, Lord Jesus, over the nation of Ukraine right now, Lord. We pray, Lord, for Russia that, Lord, they'll be able to have wisdom, Lord Jesus. And I pray that, Lord, your peace would come upon that entire land, Lord Jesus. We pray, let justice prevail, Lord Jesus. Let justice prevail. We pray even right now, Lord Jesus, for our nation. We pray for the state elections that are happening across different states. We pray that, Lord, you will appoint the right leaders, Lord Jesus, as governance. We pray that, Lord, each leader who comes, Lord Jesus, will have a heart, Lord Jesus, which will be humble, which will, Lord, be for the people, Lord. You will, Lord, work in and through them, Lord. We pray even right now for the churches across our land that we need extra portion of strength and grace. We pray for every church leader that, Lord, they'll have extra portion of strength and grace to run this race, to lead your people. We pray for worship that's across, happening across the world and across our nation, that you will be glorified, Lord Jesus. You will be glorified. Strengthen each and every believer right now. We pray especially for those who are going through a tough time, Lord, with health. We pray, Lord, your healing hand come upon them, Lord. For those especially who are terminally ill, Lord Jesus, your hand be upon them, Lord. I pray your strength would come upon them, Lord Jesus. I pray when they call on your name, they would receive healing. They would receive strength. They would receive provision, Lord. We pray for families who are journeying along with them, Lord, that they'll have strength and grace, Lord Jesus, right now. We pray for families right now who are going through difficult times, Lord Jesus, through separation, through a loss, that your hand be upon them, Lord, that they'll experience you, Lord Jesus. They'll experience you more than ever before, Lord. Holy Spirit, come down upon their families and, Lord, envelop them, Lord, so that they'll be able to see you more closer than ever before, Lord Jesus. We thank you. I pray even right now, Lord Jesus, for those who are stuck in debt, for those, Lord Jesus, who are finding difficulty in making ends meet, I pray that, Lord, you would open up the right jobs for them, Lord Jesus. I pray for those who are seeking jobs that that door will open, Lord Jesus, for them. As they wait on you, Lord Jesus, that they would see that come through. We pray that, Lord, provision will come for those who lack it, Lord Jesus. I pray even right now for kids who are preparing for their board exams, for all the examinations that are happening, that your wisdom would come down upon each and every kid, Lord Jesus. I pray that they'll be able to put their best effort. I pray, Lord, this year, Lord, let no kid take their life, Lord, because they have not achieved something. But may they know that, Lord, they can trust you and that, Lord, you would open up doors, Lord Jesus, for them to find their purpose, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. Be with us, Lord Jesus. We pray that as a church, Lord, that you would use us mightily. Lord, use us in places where there's no hope at all, Lord. Use us in places where there's no love at all, Lord Jesus. Take us to places where we can be your light and your salt, Lord Jesus, that you've called us to be. That we'll be, Lord, uh, carriers of your peace, carriers of your love, Lord Jesus, in this hurting world. And even right now, as we continue to worship you, Lord, we lift our hands. We glorify you. We lift you up. May you be exalted. May you be praised, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. Oh 
If you need prayer or just someone to speak with, please contact us on this number. We would love to get in touch with you since we believe that when we pray together, there is power in agreement. We meet this Wednesday for our weekly fellowship and prayer call. We would love to have you join us. You can DM us on the number given below to get more details. Seeking God every day is necessary in order for us to thrive and to be transformed. We as a church have published a few Bible plans on the YouVersion Bible app. All you have to do is to download the app and search for We Are Zion Chennai on it. You can do the plans alone or with your friends. Our desire is that through doing these plans, you will develop a deep love for God and His Word. If you struggle to stay disciplined in your reading of the Bible regularly, we would love to do a plan with you and help you develop this life-changing discipline. Our sermon podcasts are available on your favorite streaming podcast platform. Make sure to search for Sermon Podcast We Are Zion. Our prayer is that as you listen to these podcasts you will be blessed. Hi church, even before we get into the word of God, we are releasing a new Bible plan. It's called Praying the Scriptures Through the Lent. A lot of us struggle to have language when it comes to praying, especially during this Lent season. And we've taken three verses for each day. And even as you read, even as you, you know, take some time to meditate on it, I would ask if you can actually pray those scriptures over your life. You know, we go through a whole uh, bunch of series week after week. And in this 40 days, if you can take some time to, you know, uh, you know, distance yourself from things that actually govern you and distract you. I believe God wants to do something big in and through your life. So even as you take some time, go find this Bible plan on the YouVersion Bible app. You can go to plans and when you click on discover, just type we are Zion and you would see this Bible plan right there. Do this Bible plan. I would encourage if you can also find one or two of your friends and do it along with them so that you can pray together, believe and see God come through in this Lent season. So church, it's time to get into God's word. Can we get into God's word and listen to what he has to say for us today? I am the master. I am the keeper. I am the peacemaker. I am the mighty one. I am the rescuer. I am the redeemer. I am the giver of life and every good thing. I am the restorer of life and every dead thing. I go after the lost. I collect the wayward. I bind up the broken. I heal the sick. I tend to the weak. I watch over the strong. I am their God. I am your God. Hi Church, it's my joy to bring God's word to you today. Um, we've come to the end of this series um, titled, I am your God. As you know, that was our title theme for this whole year. And we finished that series today and um, I'm going to be sharing today about our God, the God of glory. 
the famous evangelist John Wimber. This is something that he said when someone praised him after one of his, um, you know, crusades, or if someone, you know, encouraged him after a talk. This is what he would say. He'll say, "I'll take the encouragement, but I'll pass the glory on." And so, basically, glory doesn't belong to us. It never did. It never will. Glory is something that is associated with the divine. It's associated with someone who's sovereign and supreme, and therefore, it it it's perfectly fitting for our God to be called a God of glory. And the God of glory indicates that you know this King, this King, He's someone who is over above everything. It indicates kingship. It indicates lordship. It in, in indicates sovereignty. It in indicates an ex, uh, and there's a lot of splendor attached to it, and. The fact is, when we look throughout Scripture, the word "glory," the word "glory" is also found as "glorious" or "glorification" or "gloried." All of these are words that are used to describe our God. It's used to describe the place in which He dwells. Heaven is called glorious. The psalmist writes, "The deeds of God are glorious." We see that the presence of God is glorious. The world that He has created for us to live in, right from Eden. To the current times, the world he has created is so glorious. And so, what is this glory, though? If you have to ask me, what does glory mean? It's such an abstract term sometimes, but it's such an overused term in Christendom that I wonder when we come down to brass tacks, what is glory? And so, the words that are used to describe it in the original Hebrew text in the Old Testament, it's called kabod. In the New Testament, it's called doxa. and both of these words indicate words like abundance and marvelous and and you know just maj majesty and supremacy but funnily enough they also have another definition for it, these two words and the the word that defines it is weightiness or weight there's a famous a uh, worship song where we've sung that the weight of your glory fall and what that actually means is that this attribute of god adds to the weightiness of who he is Now let me explain that a little bit more. Suppose someone who you know is, you know, very wealthy, probably a billionaire or crorepati if he's in India, and usually we address them as someone, you know, as someone who's loaded. God with all of his attributes that make him who he is makes him loaded with glory. And that's what that word means, weight. The weight of his glory. And Over the past seven weeks, what we have seen is that God is a healer. We've seen about the God who goes before us. We've seen about the God who makes us, who sanctifies us, the loving God that He is. We have seen that He is a mighty God, and all of these attributes have been things that we have physically felt in our lives. You may have felt His presence when you were worshiping Him in the privacy of your room. You may have felt His touch when He healed something in you that no one knew about. You have maybe seen Him. direct you as you had to do certain things step by step you have seen him when you went to that hill station and when you felt his presence on those hills closer to the sky than ever and you probably felt that it was so breathtaking you knew there was something glorious about it and that is what the glory of god is it's something that is tangible it is felt it's almost like an aspect of him that is so heavy that it cannot be ignored The important thing to note though is that glory is never about ourselves it is about God that he deserves all of it now if someone who asks why why does he deserve all of it this is why revelation chapter 4 verse 11 says worthy are you our lord and god to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they existed and were created because he created the whole world because everything in the world is being held together by him because it is his will that runs everything in our lives therefore we worship him that's the reason now what did god's glory look like in times past it looked like a cloud it looked like a pillar of fire it looked like the tabernacle be being filled with a smoke and light that no one could enter it sometimes looked like an angel of the lord visiting someone it had different connotations and what does it look like today what does it look like today we're going to be looking at second corinthians chapter 4 verse 6 and this is what it says for god who said let brilliant light shine out of darkness is the one who has cascaded his light into us the brilliant dawning light of the glorious knowledge of god as we gaze into the face of jesus that is what glory looks like today christ in me christ in you christ in us the hope of glory 
what it says here is the God who created the heavens and the earth, who said, let there be light. He's the same one who has now put his light inside us because he's the light of the world, like John writes. And he so beautifully also writes that you are the light light of the world. Jesus tells his disciples, you are now the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. And so he has poured his light into us, the brilliant light of the glorious knowledge of God as we gaze into the face of Jesus. No longer can we say, I don't know what the glory of God is. Well, if you have Jesus in you, the glory of God should be radiating from you. So when you look at another member of the body of Christ, you should be able to confidently believe that the glory of God is shining in their life. That's the beauty of this. So isn't it amazing that Jesus made this glory accessible by putting it and depositing it inside each one of us. Thanks to having a relationship with him, the glory now dwells within us. So the sum and substance of it is this, no Christ, no glory. There's this common adage which says, no guts, no glory. But I'm changing it today to no Christ, no glory. You don't have Christ in your life. You're not going to experience this glory. You're not going to have it in you. And you're definitely not going to be radiating it off. So today's passage that we're going to be uh, looking at closer is the sole passage in the entire Bible, which has the greatest number of references to glory. Okay, we're going to be looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 3. We're going to be looking at it from uh, verse 7 right up to verse 18. So I want you to just read it. It might seem a bit foreign in the beginning, but it will start settling in and then you'll understand what it's saying. The old way with laws etched in stone led to death, though it began with such glory that the people of Israel could not bear to look at Moses' face, for his face shone with the glory of God, even though the brightness was already fading away. Shouldn't we expect far greater glory under the new way now that the Holy Spirit is giving life? If the old way, which brings condemnation, was glorious, how much more glorious is the new way, which makes us right with God? Since this new way gives us such confidence, we can be very bold. We are not like Moses who put a veil over his face so the people of Israel would not see the glory, even though it was destined to fade away. But the people's minds were hardened and to this day, whenever the old covenant is being read, the same veil covers their minds so they cannot understand the truth. And this veil can be removed only by believing in Christ. Yes, even today when they read Moses' writings, their hearts are covered with that veil and they do not understand. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away for the Lord is the spirit and wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. Just to give you a bit of background on this whole chapter, writer to the Corinthian church is Paul and he's comparing the old covenant with the new covenant. The old covenant was what God made with Abraham and it was it was always mediated by the blood of sheep and ram and other things. But the new covenant was done with the, with the with Jesus as the mediator and his blood was the perfect sacrifice that gave us once and for, for all entry into the most holy place, which was the presence of God. And so Jesus actually brought in this new covenant where there need not be fear anymore, where there need not be a distance or a separation. He bridged the gap. And the thing was, Moses was one of the guys who got the old covenant down. The first covenant that was made was with Abraham, but then it moved on to Moses who actually got the Ten Commandments. He brought it down and then he mediated. He would speak to God and then come and speak to the people. And what happened was he was on um, this mountain for 40 days and 40 nights without eating, without drinking, spent time with God, close quarters, brought back the word of God uh, as two stone tablets and a whole bunch of other rules and regulations for the people. When he came down, the people couldn't look at him directly because of the radiance of God's presence on his face. And so what would happen was periodically, every time he went to meet with God, when he came back, his face was so radiant. After he finished passing on the information to the people, he would wear a veil so that they won't be, you know, so in awe of it. And because it was just a fading away radiance, it was not a permanent radiance. And what Paul is writing here is that was the glory of the old covenant. But this is the new covenant and this glory does not fade. So he was talking about a permanence in the glory that comes in because of Jesus. The glory that Moses experienced and radiated was temporary, but this is a permanent one. And he says that we now live under the new covenant. You and I, thanks to accepting Jesus, we live 
under the new covenant and the glory of this covenant far exceeds the one of the old covenant and the reason being the new covenant brings in life the old covenant the minute they saw all those rules and regulations as much as they didn't try to keep it they couldn't have because there were so many and they were bound to slip up at some point which is why the sacrifices were instituted and so that the, those laws reminded them that there was punishment when they failed but in this new covenant we have the option of repentance and being forgiven and therefore there was life there's renewal okay the new covenant has so much more glory than the old covenant moses his face glowed temporarily the radiance was just for a few days but as on a daily basis as we spend time in the presence of jesus that radiance is is said to be there for the rest of our lives and the third important thing from this passage is that the agent of this transformation the agent of actually you know displaying this glory in us is the holy spirit who is god himself in spirit form and he is the one who brings new life he is the one who brings freedom and he is the one who transforms us every single day from glory to glory meaning that today i'm a little more like jesus than i was yesterday and maybe at the end of my life i'm a little bit more like jesus when i will meet him in eternity i'm not going to get there immediately i'm going to take a lifetime but it's a day by day transformation that is mediated by the holy spirit so the important thing to remember is that god's glory is no longer an abstract untouchable un- beyond understanding thing it is now tangible and felt in our life because of christ in us okay so it's no longer something you have to be like i don't know what the heck, what that means you can just believe this that christ's presence in your life christ's power that is evident in your life is the source of that glory okay so that's the important thing i want to focus on one particular verse 2 corinthians 3 verse 9 18 so all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the lord and the lord who is the spirit makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image so the final destination is being made into the image of jesus and every day is one step closer to that and we know that the holy spirit uh, act, makes that happen but look at the words here so that when the veil is removed we can see and reflect the glory of the lord and today i believe that each of us have been called to be reflectors of the glory of god if you have had a, a bicycle growing up or if you have um you know um, maybe even if you've gone on these mountain roads where there are no street lights you would have seen reflectors that are placed on road you would have a reflector fixed on your cycle now how does a reflector work it's so interesting when you look at the science behind it so these reflectors have something called retro reflectivity basically they have a material where the source suppose the car is the source you know when we're driving on a mountain road the car light hits on the reflector and because of which you know where the boundaries to the road are similarly you're riding a bike you don't have a light of your own but when other cars are coming on the road behind you or before you their light shines on your reflector and you are seen so a reflector is so important now what retro reflectivity does is nothing but takes the, the light from the light source then after a lot of refraction and reflection gives back the light to the source and that's how you actually see it visibly on its own the reflector has no light on its own it really doesn't serve a purpose it needs light from the source and I, as i was reading this i found it so interesting that you know so often we say um you know what all glory to god when someone praises us we go all glory to god but what does that actually mean it means that anything that i'm achieving today anything that i'm doing today is because of him working in and through me and so when someone is actually seeing that and praising it what they are actually seeing is what god is doing in me and therefore i reflect the glory i should ideally reflect the glory back to him my question for you today is this have you been taking in all the glory for yourself or have you been a reflector because we've been created to be reflectors yes glory is good we live in a time where praise is very limited people don't praise you easily people don't give you credit when credit is due but today we're going to look away from that and we're going to say everything that i am everything that i have everything that i do is because of what christ has already done for me it's because of christ's good and perfect will for me that i get to do these things and so when i do get praised when i do get the honor for it do i reflect the glory back to him remember what our source is is what we reflect back to so the question is who are sources 
Like I said, no Christ, no glory. Yes, if you don't know Christ, you still probably make it big in life. You still do great things. But it's beautiful that when we know who Jesus is, when we experience him for himself, for, for who he is, we have a relationship that is growing every day. You will find that everything in our life goes back to him. The reason I have this family is because of him. The reason I stand healed is because of him. The reason I have breath in my body today is because of him. The reason I can, you know, logically think and process things is because of him. You realize that everything goes back to him. The reason I enjoy nature as much as I do is because of him. The reason my body does the things it needs to do is because of him. You see that? Everything reflects back to him because Christ in me, the hope of glory. So today I want to leave with you three things, three ways in which you and I can actually better be reflectors of God's glory. How can we be better reflectors of God's glory? That's the question today. Maybe thus far we have taken in all the glory. Maybe thus far we've been pushing for our glory, for our name, for our fame. But today I want to ask, are you ready to be a reflector of God's glory? Because that is what we are called to do as followers of Christ. That's what we are called to do as those who love Christ. The first way in which we can be a better reflector is when we find our sufficiency in Christ. Find our sufficiency in Christ. We live in a time where all of us are grasping for things. The past one week, every time I pick and drop my kids, my daughter has, you know, got it in her head that she needs to have coconut water after school. So she collected her own money and every single day, and the irony for me is, what I find funny is, she has a full meal waiting for her at home and there is juice at home. There is, um, you know, a potential dessert items at home. Granted, I don't allow her to eat it every single day, but there is, there's so much at home, but yet every single day this week, she pushed me saying, I want to buy that. Or if, you know, we're driving by a, a departmental store, she'd say, can we stop and pick up a milkshake? And of course, I don't give in that easily. So every single day this week, I had to bat away her suggestions. I had to ignore it. Um, but I realized that that is the model of what we are, of the entire world. We are a grasping generation. We want more. We have uh, a certain amount of furniture, but then we look at that one thing online and we think that would fit perfectly in that corner. We think that, you know what, I have the, you know, all of this baking apparatus, but that one more thing would be awesome. Maybe you're a gadget freak and you just love having these gadgets. And you think if I just had that one more thing, my, my, you know, gadget shelf would be complete. Whatever it is, we are living in a time where we are greedy, we're grasping, we want more. But the thing is, to be reflectors of God's glory, we need to find our sufficiency in Christ. How do I know this? 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 5. This is what it says. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God. Now, the, the background to this is Paul is, he asks a rhetorical question of his audience. He's asking them, do we need letters of recommendation from you? Well, we don't. He answers it himself. He says, your lives are our recommendation letters. The fact that you are changed in knowing Jesus is enough to say that we have done our job well. And so he goes on to say, I'm not boasting about myself. I just know that my sufficiency is in Christ. I don't need your approval. I've got God's approval. When you translate that sufficiency to every part of our lives, so many of us want more so that we can be more. We want to do more so that we are seen more. But today, God's asking us, will you be find your sufficiency in me? Am I enough for you? Maybe you've been in this place where you think you need a bigger house. Maybe you think, I need a car now. Or maybe you think, I need that increment so that, you know, then I can meet those needs. But what if you were, instead of grasping and acquiring, you actually reclined and you said, Lord, I'm going to relax in the place You've put me, and this will sound so counterintuitive for those of you who are driven and passionate. I, for one, am extremely driven. I enjoy, you know, pursuing the things I love. But here's the thing. There comes a time in our lives when we need to understand if we're grasping or if we're pursuing. We need to understand who we are pursuing. What are we pursuing? Why am I doing it? And if it, the answers are not reflecting God's glory, there's a problem. And so I want to ask you today, if you will find your sufficiency in Christ, will you say, I'm content? You know what? I'm not getting this promotion, but it's okay because I know God has kept me here for a reason. Yeah, maybe I don't have that increment, but I love the fact that I can do certain things within this budget. Maybe I can't afford the things my neighbor can, but I love that I have good health. 
I love that I have what I need. What if we were to live completely, completely content in where we are right now? I believe that will set us apart from the watching world because the world is encouraging, buy more, take that EMI, do this, do that. But what if I was to say in Jesus, I'm, I'm good. I'm fine. I'm right here where I'm at. I'm good. That in itself will set you apart. That in itself will reflect the glory back to God because like the Apostle Paul writes, I have found that I can be content in any circumstance. You give me, you put me in a prison, I can be content. You can leave me in, in a comfortable home, I'll be content. I have food, I'm content, I'm starving, I'm okay. I wonder if we can say that we will, we can find our sufficiency in Christ. Are we confident that God has given us what we need for this season of our lives? When we think of Jehovah Jireh, you know, over the years and in, in, in what all of us have believed, irrespective of our backgrounds, we think that he will get us all that we need. But what if Je Jehovah Jireh actually means he has already given us all that we need? He knows before we ask what we need. And so what if Jireh is a God who is sufficient, all sufficient? He knows what I need. He's given it already. Maybe some things need me to pray and ask for it. But what if we were to stop acquiring and start reclining in the promises of God? Start reclining in the place God has placed you in. That's the important thing. We need to ask the Holy Spirit because he's the mediator of this new covenant. He's the one who actually helps us move from glory to glory. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit, can you help me be content with where I'm at? Maybe I have a huge idol in my home, the way I set it up. Guilty as charged. Guilty as charged. What if I come to this place of finding my sufficiency in Christ? What I have is enough, Lord. I'll wait till all of this gets old and maybe a bit torn and then I'll think of replacing it. Maybe I don't need that one extra luxury. Maybe I'll give more for you. Maybe I will live within my means and find complete sufficiency in you. Ask the Holy Spirit because He alone can bring us contentment. He alone can give us an attitude of sufficiency in Christ. We cannot come apart from that. We can't wish ourselves well. We can't, uh, you know, really step out in willpower. We need the Holy Spirit's intervention. First thing is to live in the sufficiency of Christ. The second thing, the second thing is to trust suffering to do its work. And I know this is not a, a fun word. The S word is horrible. Who, you know, knowingly invites suffering into their lives? No one, none of us. But the beautiful thing is that this, the, the Christian journey has suffering and victories simultaneously many times. We have certain issues in our health maybe, but we're succeeding at something else. Sometimes it's just a season of hardship, but around the corner there's blessing. So suffering is something we need to get used to. We can't run from it. And the beautiful thing is that there is something good that comes out of suffering. It's not ever wasted. When Christ is in it, when our God is with us, whatever suffering brings, the outcome is always good. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 to 12. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed but not driven to despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us but life in you. I want us to look at those, those words again. We are afflicted in every way but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. It's almost like uh, a person who's really optimistic. Okay, and I believe that when we look at this verse, it just shows us the frailty of the human condition. We are literally jars of clay. Clay pots are so frail. Just one nudge, one kick, and it'll break. It'll have a crack, and it's once you have a crack, you really can't fill a fluid. You can't put a liquid in it. Or you can maybe reseal it and then set it. It's, it's so delicate. Much like the humans. Much like us. 
And the beautiful thing that he's saying is that we have this treasure in jars of clay. I don't know about you, but I don't keep anything um, like a treasure in my jars of clay at home. I don't. It's usually stuff that, you know, probably water for, you know, my the birds outside or something. That's what I use my clay pots for. He's saying that we as believers, we are like jars of clay because we're human, but we have a treasure inside us. This treasure shows, it demonstrates to a watching world that the power is not my power, it's God's power at work in me. And so I want us to remember this, that suffering has to do its work in us because that is when we really become reflectors of God's glory. This past week, you may have seen the news where the singer who came on America has got talent, um, Jane Markowski, the night bird. She, that was her, um, her name, her stage name. She passed away at 31 uh, with cancer. And as I was watching videos of her, I just realized that suffering does something to us on a physical level. But because of Christ in her, you could see the radiance about her. And she never stopped, you know, she never missed an opportunity to give glory to God. It was either on her Instagram page or on her YouTube, somewhere or the other, Jesus got the glory. Suffering must do its work in us. There's something refining about suffering. But And the interesting thing is you look at any analogy in agriculture, in industry, there has to be breaking in order for a product to be got. Case in point, you take coffee. Coffee is got from coffee beans. The coffee beans on their own can't do anything. We have to grind it. And it's in that mechanical grinding that the coffee beans elicit that trademark flavor. Have you ever tried um, kneading dough for rotis or for bread? What do you have to do? You pour the water in, the, powder, it's the, the, the flour is powdery, and then you start kneading it. And when you do that, you're breaking up these molecules into so many more pieces. It's almost messy, right? And then ultimately, you're able to make a ball of dough. What about wine? How is it made? Grapes are trod upon. Grapes are crushed in order to get the best wine. And so here's the deal, without the breaking, without the crushing, without the grinding, the most beautiful things are not God. Today, if you and I are looking to be more and more like Jesus, suffering will have to do its work in us. And when that pain happens, when, when we walk through that pain, when we walk through that struggle, the amazing thing is that we'll become true reflectors of God's glory because it will do a good work in us. I've, I've heard about how there was if you know about the metamorphosis that happens in butterflies, once it's in its chrysalis or in the pupil stage, it has to emerge as an adult butterfly. You know, until then, its life has been pretty cushy. Of course, it does a lot of work, has to eat a lot, it has to, um, you know, weave that cocoon around it. But the most work happens when it breaks out of that pupil stage and emerges as a butterfly. And you know what it does? It actually physically nibbles through the hard shell of the pupa and it pushes itself out and it's not easy because the hole is so small and the butterfly is so big. It's not the size of the caterpillar who went in. And so what has to happen is the butterfly has to push itself out, literally labor in coming out, in emerging. And sometimes uh, ch little children who have watched this, you know, this process have tried to aid the process. You know what they did? They took a pair of scissors and they cut the pupa thinking, you know what, they're helping that little butterfly out. The tragedy was that when they cut the pupa, thinking they were freeing the butterfly to come out easier, the butterfly fell out limp because its wings have no strength. And then the butterfly dies within a few hours. So what is the science behind that? The butterfly in pushing itself out of that pupa as it's suffering and struggling to get out, the wings get stronger. These delicate, beautiful, fragile wings gets stronger and stronger through the pushing and the hard labor. And when it emerges, it's beautifully ready to fly for however long or short its life is. Suffering is good. We cannot discount what it does in our life. Maybe we can't really embrace it. It's hard to embrace it. But when we are walking through it, believe this, that the way we walk through suffering, the way we emerge from it and the way we continue on is what gives glory to God. Ultimately, how we walk through it, how we emerge and how we continue on with our lives is what gives glory to God. I want you to ask the Holy Spirit, if you're going through a season of suffering, ask him, Holy Spirit, why am I going through this? What is it that you want to do in me? Is there something in me that you want me to change? Is there something that you want to change? 
have i taken you for granted have i taken my health for granted have i taken loved ones for granted have i not been loving people the right way do i need to come back to you lord what is this suffering about help me what is it that you want to teach me help me endure help me come out of this braver i can assure you that when you ask those questions of him rather than the simple the simplistic question of why me what if you went deeper holy spirit give me endurance help me to believe that you have a plan in this suffering that's the second thing and the third thing the third way in which we can be reflectors of god's glory is by staying continually hopeful 2 corinthians chapter 3 verse 12 since we have such hope we are very bold 2 corinthians chapter 4 verse 16 to 19 says this so we do not lose heart though our outer self is wasting away our inner self is being renewed day by day for this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look not to the things that are seen but to the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are transient but the things that are unseen are eternal the interesting thing about hope is that so often hope looks like actually speaking things that you want it to look like you just speak it out say you know what i hope this is going to happen i believe that things are going to get better maybe we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel but we trust that there is light somewhere out there and it's going to touch my life i was telling you about the night bird the singer jane markowski and this is what her family wrote, you know the family wrote a statement after her death and this is what it reads those who knew her enjoyed her larger than life personality and sense of humor she had a witty joke for every occasion even if the joke was on her her, her lasting legacy will be the gift of hope she communicated through music and the strength she found in jesus that's what hope looks like hope gives us courage in the hardest of seasons hope is seeing things with eternity lens on you know it's so easy to look at things that we see and lose hope with the situation in um, in russia and ukraine sometimes you you get worried you think what's our world coming to but then hope is looking at it with eternity in mind hope is trusting that whether or not things get better here on earth that it's going to be bliss in eternity hope will change the way we live it will change the way we pray it will change the way we love people it will change the way we give of ourselves hope changes everything it is the currency of earth for every follower of christ hope is what will give you that radiance that doesn't fade maybe we are not like moses going up in a mountain spending time with god for 40 days without eating and coming back radiant today you and i when we have hope in jesus that radiance will not leave us hope is what will make your face glow when your body is failing it will make your heart beat with a passion for god even when it's breaking in a million ways that's what hope does i love that at the first audition of this precious young woman when she was at the on the stage the the judges didn't know her background they didn't know that she was a cancer survivor they didn't know she was undergoing treatment at the at that time um but she was introducing herself and the interesting thing is one of the judges actually said you have a glow about you and then soon after that she mentioned that she was going through cancer and this she was in her last stages of life and they were shocked it moved the judges to tears but what caught me was that ex- that word he said he said you're just glowing i believe that's the glory of god in her and i believe that that is the hope of glory that each of us have within us and that is what is going to set you apart that's how you're a better reflector of god's glory when you can look at everything with hope it will set you apart when you look at the most dismal settings you'll be able to say you know what god you have a plan in this and i'm going to trust you you're going to use scripture to give you hope that your future hope is not cut off you're going to believe it and you're going to live in it because remember christ in us the hope of glory so don't lose heart outwardly maybe you're fading away maybe your marriage failed maybe your spouse failed you maybe a child has failed you and you just you're at the end of your rope you don't know what to do with this child maybe a friendship that you had treasured let you down outwardly you're wasting away but inner self your inner man is being renewed if you would allow the holy spirit in and you say you know what help me live with hope 
गिव मी होप हेल्प मी अबाउंड इन होप लाइक रोमन्स फिफ्टीन थर्टीन सेज हेल्प मी अबाउंड इन होप एज आई ट्रस्ट इन यू लॉट बिकॉज दैट विल मेक यू रेडियंट एंड दैट विल मेक यू अ रिफ्लेक्टर ऑफ गॉड्स ग्लोरी जीजस सेड इन द गॉस्पल ऑफ जॉन वेन ही वॉज टॉकिंग टू हिज फॉलोअर्स ही सेड दैट दे दैट हिज फादर वुड गेट ग्लोरी वेन पीपल सॉ देर फ्रूटफुल लाइफ्स टूडे if you're wondering if your life is fruitful maybe you've been feeling utterly unfruitful can i tell you this that if you've been living completely satiated in who god is you've been living finding your sufficiency in him you've been allowing suffering to do its work and maybe just maybe you've been living with hope constant hope an unbeatable hope you've been living a fruitful life and god is pleased with you maybe you have been discounting yourself and saying you know what my life's not fruitful i don't have a spouse i've been doing this journey alone i don't know if i'm living fruitfully he guess what if you walking in the ways of the lord if christ is in you you are bound to be living a fruitful life so i want to ask you today have you let god get all of the glory in your life or have you tried to take away some maybe someone said you're exceptional in your job and you've been like oh thank you so much i knew i was or maybe for everything in your life you believe that you're self made you know what all of this i worked hard i worked my behind off to get to where i'm at in india at least we hear this a lot he or she is a self made person but i believe that every one of us has been god made and those of us who follow jesus were christ made we are christ remade almost nothing we cannot take credit for anything that we are doing anything that we hold anything that we have charge of it's all his he's been kind enough to entrust it to us and so to him belongs all of the glory and the important thing to remember about this god that we serve is that he will not share his glory with anyone else he will not give his glory to an idol he will not allow us to place anything in that position and give it the glory romans chapter 1 verse 21 to 23 and with this i close for although they knew god they did not honor him as god or give thanks to him but they became became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened claiming to be wise they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal god for images resembling mortal men and birds and animals and creeping things doesn't that sound like where our world is at right now we have so many new age movements movements that praise mother earth movements that say oh you know what let's get into a vegan diet let's you know because the sun has the energy of the sun is trapped in it and that's what's going to heal us all many christians many christians are following new age idolatries things like yoga things that require us to enjoy nature more than the one who actually gave us in nature when we start worshiping the created rather than the creator it's idolatry and god hates it and so today i want to ask you if you are one of those people who has been exchanging the glory of our immortal invisible eternal god for things that have been created if you've been thinking you know what um i i love god i love god yes i do but i also love these things and these are things that keep me going this is what gives me my body this is what helps me stay nourished i'm sorry but i don't agree with that the word of god doesn't agree with that what are we exchanging what have we exchanged the glory of god for who is the source in order for you to be a reflector of god's glory you need to look closer at who the source of that light is who the source of that glory is it cannot be anything other than the living god and so i want to encourage you today that if you find yourself falling into the category of an idolater someone who's placed something else instead of god you've been worshiping the creator instead of the creator i want to ask you would you take a few minutes right now with me to repent of that and come back to your first love come back to the god of all glory can you do that with me father we just come to you right now and we repent oh father of anything that is not of you lord when we have placed the created at a higher pedestal than you lord we ask that you would forgive us I ask that Lord we would come back to you. I ask oh Father that we will relinquish every dependency oh Lord on the things that the world says is good on the world advocates as life changing and come back to you Holy Spirit who is really the life changer. I pray that Lord you would fill us with the knowledge of God that we will abound in hope 
that you will give us a contentment in you and that lord when we walk through hard paths we'll allow that to shape us and change us and be reflectors of your glory i pray right now oh father if anyone is struggling with contentment that they would come back to you and say lord i want to come back to you i want to be content in you if anyone's struggling right now in the throes of suffering i just pray that they will come back to you and say lord do what you will teach me what you will i'm listening i'm here help me in someone's lacking in hope i pray oh father that they will get back to you the source of all hope we pray that each of us will experience christ in us the hope of glory we love you and we thank you lord in jesus name i pray amen amen i pray that as you step into this year two months are down 10 more to go that you will be a reflector of god's glory that you won't take for granted the glory that shines in you thanks to jesus and i pray that you will be so full of contentment that he'll set you apart that you will be so full of joy even in suffering that your face never loses its radiance and that mostly you will have an eternity mindset that you will be hopeful in every situation have an amazing week god bless you so church even as we close this service even as you heard i believe all of us are called to be reflectors of god's glory you know and i strongly believe that even as we've done this entire series i am your god i would ask you if you can take this and for the remainder of this year for the next 10 months i love god to be god over your life you know if you haven't allowed him into a particular area i would ask you if you can allow him because you know he's sovereign he holds everything in his hands and he wants to direct you he wants to go before you he wants to heal you he wants to restore you but i also believe he wants you to be his carrier of glory so that when he descends upon you people around you will be able to see that there's something different you are a carrier of his hope you are a carrier of his grace you are a carrier of his strength god does not want you to remain the same he wants to change you not change you in your outside appearance he wants to change you inside out so that generations can you know find this true and living god and if you've accepted jesus hold on to him Yes this Christian walk is difficult that's why we believe in community and I want to encourage you if you are not part of a community get in touch with us and we would love to be in touch with you we would love to journey along with you and if you are in the city of Chennai we would love to meet you we strongly believe no one is called to do this Christian journey alone we are meant to do it in community and if you're not following us on our social media do follow us if you have any prayer requests or you want to get in touch with us our numbers and our email are on the screen get in touch with us but even as you start this week god wants to deposit his glory in you but that requires us to take some time to seek him and when we seek him he promises that we can find him so would you take that as a challenge even as you take that challenge i would pray that god would go before you he will make every crooked path straight and that he will be with you every step of the way so can we close this service may the love of the father the grace of his only son jesus christ and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore and all god's people said amen amen so church online have a blessed week and remember that whoever finds jesus finds life god bless you all